Okay, so we have our short block finished and we're about ready to put the heads on. Obviously we're using used parts that we got. Um, we're going to use our die grinder, 90 degree angle grinder with just a scotch Bright pad on it. We're just going to do a light surface retouch on the block. Going to do the same thing with the heads, just clean those up. And we'll spray them down, wipe them down with some brake cleaner and get them bolted on. We already did this once before, uh, before we put the block together, but we're just going to do a touch up since it's been sitting and getting some oxidization on it. So just a side note and an extra tip, whenever you're cleaning flat surfaces like this or on the heads or an intake manifold, whatever, um, you want to make sure you use these little scotch bright pads because if you use, say, you know, like a wire brush like this, you know, one of these units, what happens is these little bristles come off and they'll get down inside your cylinder or your intake manifold or whatever you're working on and they can cause problems and it's a pain in the ass so just go ahead and stick with the red or green scotch bright pads and you'll be just fine you'll be safe you won't have to be digging around or putting a magnet in any small holes to get the wire bristles out all right once again uh, we're using a, a non-chlorinated brake cleaner um, that keeps it from Anytime you clean something with it, it doesn't leave a film on your brake rotors or heads or whatever else you happen to be cleaning with it. And we're just doing a light cleanup here. Use a brake cleaner only on the surface of the block. You don't want to get it down inside here because you got that all nice and oiled up and clean and lubed and ready for the pistons. Just one last cleaning. And after you have the surface cleaned, One final blowout with the air just to get all the lint and dust out of it and you're all ready to put your head gasket on. Alright, and make sure you go over the surface of your head with your scotch right pad, your angle grinder, because you want to get all this leftover rust and leftover old head gasket. You want to make sure all that stuff is cleaned off your surface area. And then same thing after that brake cleaner, wipe the surface with the rag and blow dry it off and it should be ready to go. So while you're at it go ahead and run your Scotch-Brite disc over your intake ports just to get them cleaned up a little bit. Uh, on this block right here you can see that there are no numbers on the number tab or they're barely visible which means this block has been decked. So what that means is when they deck the block is they actually run a machine over the top of the block, they surface it and they actually grind the block down so many thousandths of an inch, which ineffectively raises the compression ratio because now the pistons are closer to the top and also affects our head gasket alignment, um, spacing, clearances, our head clearances, our valve clearances, so we need to check that when we finish putting the heads back on. Also, if you're doing the job inside the car, you always want to make sure that you have your oil galley covered, all your lifter holes covered, so you don't get any grime or dirt or anything else in there, and that just makes cleanup a lot easier. All right, we've got our surface all cleaned, everything blown out, everything's good to go. You're now ready to install your head gasket, and head gasket doesn't necessarily matter which direction this goes up with the rings up or the flat part up. The main thing is you want to make sure that all the water holes and bolt holes, everything lines up and you're good to go. Do not use any kind of sealer on the gasket itself. Don't try to spooge up the water ports. Don't try to put any kind of copper spray on it. Don't use anything else on the gasket. Dryer is better it'll seal just fine as long as you install the head correctly. And finally you may want to double check your head with a straight edge. Make sure the straight edge goes all the way end to end without any gaps underneath the ruler except of course where the combustion chambers are. Um, you want to make sure your head's not cracked, make sure it's not warped, make sure you can't get any feeler gauges underneath this part here, underneath between the head and the ruler. Of course, you probably would have done that as soon as you'd taken the engine apart or before you had your machine work done, but that's just an extra check.
One thing you can use a wire wheel on that works pretty good is cleaning all of your head bolts. You want to get all the goop and rust and sealer and everything off of those head bolts. So just go over them with the wire wheel and we'll be ready to put the head on. Okay, be very careful when you're putting the head on. If you can, have somebody help you. You can line up the top part for the height, left and right, and then drop the bottom part to line up the dowels. You don't want to scrape the head across the gasket because that would mess it up. And like so. On a Chevy small block engine, you're going to have three different lengths of head bolts. You've got long ones that go at the top in between the valve springs. You've got two medium length bolts that go on the ends on the outside of the valve springs and short ones that go outside the head at the bottom of the head. Now these bolts go into water ports um, and water jackets that cool the engine so you need to seal them. And the Ultra Gray from Primatex is a sealer that I swear by. I've used it for many years never had any problems with any leaks. They work on bolts and any kind of gaskets that you need to seal up. And with these bolts just need a little bit of a film on the threads at the end. This is a medium length bolt that's going to go down here. That's going to go on the end. The other medium bolt is going to go on the other end of the head down here. The long bolts are going to go up here between the valve springs. And the short bolts are going to go on the outside of the head down here at the bottom of the head. Okay, we have our medium bolts here and here inside the head. This is a long bolt with a little bit of spooge on it. That's going to go down in here in between the valve springs, like so. Here we've got a short head bolt. This goes on the outside of the head down here towards the bottom into the short holes. Okay, after we have all of our head bolts sealed and started, we can zip them down with a 3 8 gun or by hand. And there's a certain pattern to this you want to start with the middle bolt, zip that down or tighten it down by hand, and work your way out to the bottom and make a circle pattern. So as you go around, you're going to hit these bolts, you're going to get wider and wider on the head, and you're going to make a circle pattern around like this until you get all the head bolts tightened down, either by hand or with a small 3 8 gun. Don't use a large half inch gun. Okay, it's very important that we torque these head bolts down correctly and since this is a stock Chevrolet head, we look on our cheat sheet for a stock Chevrolet head, it tells us we want 65 foot-pounds of torque. And if you're using aluminum heads especially, you really want to make sure you check the cheat sheet for whichever heads you're using so you torque the head down correctly. Alright, once again for you who are beginners or just never cared, uh, we're going to set our torque wrench by the numbers here to 65 foot-pounds so we can torque down our head and whichever heads you're using if they're aluminum or aftermarket cast iron head you want to make sure you have the proper torque specifications or specs for the head that you're actually using as my old boss used to say irregardless of the head that you're using on your small block Chevrolet the torque pattern is going to be the same. You want to start here on the center bolt, right in the middle of the head. Have your torque wrench set to the correct torque spec and tighten it down. So you hear that noise. That means that you've reached 65 foot-pounds. So start in that middle bolt. And you're just going to go down and you're going to go out one bolt like this. You're going to tighten up this one. Then you're going to tighten up the next one to it. And you're going to work your way around in a circle pattern around the head until you get to the outside bolts. Once you're done torquing down all the bolts, 
you can go through and just double check them across this way, double check them across this way, just to make sure everything is torqued to spec.